Now, Paulo von Chiraki is the president of the Global Policy Institute. Um, I don't need to tell you this is a strategic area. This is uh, the Not tensions uh, rising, but you've been on this broadcast before where we've talked about the tensions rising, but they do seem like they've kind of been ginned up uh, of late. What's your greatest concern at this stage? Well, uh, the, the greatest concern of everybody should be a miscalculation, a mistake. Some, somebody doing something foolish, somebody shooting when they're not supposed to, somebody mistaking something, friend or foe, you know, these things can happen, and they have happened before. Uh, this is, this is, would not be the unprecedented of, uh, of a, a commander or, or somebody in charge of a, I don't know, a battery releasing a weapon, and then, and then you don't know what happens afterward. That would be the biggest concern. Short of that, which is a possibility, but not, it, it's not inevitable, uh, I am fairly confident that neither side, although this may look contradictory, is really eager for a major confrontation. I don't see, I don't have any sense that the Trump administration is saying, okay, now I'm gonna, we're going to come and get you. First of all, the force is not there. Uh, yes, we have strength in our presence, the United States presence, the Navy is there, you know, we, we, we have our assets, Bahrain, the Fifth Fleet, the, the, the Air Force has its own major base in, uh, in Qatar. We have reinforced, uh, you know, some of those positions, but this is not an invasion force. And Iraq, uh, sorry, and Iran is three times as big as Iraq. Right. You're not going to go to, uh, to Iran with a couple of, uh, uh, you know, thousand troops. So I don't see that, I don't see that we are gearing up uh, that way. And I don't see, quite frankly, Iran having any interest in uh, needling, and uh, well, needling, yes, but not doing some major act of provocation that would uh, cause uh, uh, you know, a strong reaction. What's the strategy here on, on the Iranian uh, side, do you think? I mean, I've, I've heard some analysts say, look, two can play at this game. If they want to tighten the screws on Iran, Iran can try and tighten the screws the other yeah, way. Look, uh, what do you think's at play here? Uh, okay, look, on the American side, I'm still convinced that the basic strategy is economic strangulation. In other words, the United States has a uh, wants to use the sanctions as its primary tool to put enormous pressure on Iran by depriving it of, essentially of oxygen, of money, of revenue. Uh, can't do this, can't do that, can't import anything, cannot do, use banking services, cannot export oil. I mean, although they smuggle some and what have you, but, but fundamentally to, to make it so difficult for them that they hope Secretary Pompeo and President Trump and you know National Security Advisor Bolton say, okay, they're going to come, I have to come back for air. They have to say, okay, no more. Let's talk. I think that's the American strategy. Whether it's going to play out the way they hope or not, it's a different story. From the Iranian side, it's more complicated because they have to show resilience. They have to show the government, that is, to the home front and to the world, that they can stand the heat. That, that, that yes, this is bad, but we've been here before. We've, we've been under sanctions for decades, in, in a sense, and uh, we've been at war. Remember the, the, the war with Iraq, eight years, mm -hmm. and was horrible, and yet they survived. So they need to show uh, that they have strength and, and initiative and what have you. And these gestures, like uh, seizing the tankers, of course, the, the first step was uh, the, the Iranian tanker seized in the Mediterranean by the British in Gibraltar. But to say, you know, we, we can take the initiative, we, we're not here just uh, uh, helpless uh, puppies that we don't know what to do. So this, I think there is a, a desire and, and an effort to show to the home front that they are strong, they're resilient, and they can react. You know, you mentioned uh, Iran's strategy. Uh, the, the question, I guess, about the Trump strategy is, is who's the Trump whisperer now? Because there's a piece in Foreign Policy today saying that John Bolton's basically fallen out of favor. So who's the person advising him, and, and where do we see him going? Because uh, he does have the hawkish elements, and then I'm sure there's others trying to steer him in a different direction. Indeed. You know, here's the thing. Uh, are we, is the policy to say, we are going to exercise maximum pressure until the moment in which the Iranians will be forced to come back to us pleading to, to renegotiate? Or are we going to exercise some pressure and then say, hey, guys, let's talk. Let's see if we can settle this thing and, and figure out some ways uh, to you know, reorganize this whole business of the, of the nuclear deal, et cetera. The cynics say, as long as Trump can do another treaty that is not going to be Obama's treaty, it's going to be good. All of a sudden, 
even if it looks more or less like the old one, as long as it's not Obama, it's going to be good. That's what some critics say. So I am not quite sure what the end game is here. If we go back to Secretary Pompeo and his speech at the Heritage Foundation, where he had that long laundry list of the things that Iran was supposed to do before being kind of reaccepted in the family of civilized countries, that's a very long list. That is about, it's about the nuclear stuff. It's about the support for terrorism, Hezbollah, ballistic missiles, uh, you know, terrorism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the Iranians at that time said, no way. This is not a basis for discussion. So is there a half loaf? In other words, instead of the 10, 12 points made by uh, Pompeo, would the administration settle for three or four, you know, as long as it looks better, or, or they can sell it from a PR standpoint as looking better than the one that the treaty negotiated by Secretary Kerry on behalf of the Obama administration? I think, honestly, it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure that there is a, a clear understanding here. Of course. Uh, Trump has said repeatedly, we will never, ever, ever accept a nuclear Iran. Okay? Is that non-negotiable? Absolutely. Or is there some kind of a wiggle room here? Um, it's a moving target. It is indeed. Paulo, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you. It.